What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? <laughs> I don't know why my voice was so deep like that, y'all. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> I got to get this fucking life fixed. I am so tired of it. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't want people talking about my content. But no, let me stop. Um, now, see, I just got through recording. I, I'm, I'm in the midst of editing right now. I just got through recording a video for a, a girl in the picture. Girl in the picture that was on Netflix. I watched that and baby... I, oof, it made my skin crawl. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even going to lie because, you know, shit like that really does happen or whatever. But y'all need to go watch that if you have not. Watch the docuseries first and then watch uh, my recap of it or whatever. You know, we can discuss down in the comments. But I was going to put this in on it, but it was already a long video and I wanted to do that to y'all, uh, make y'all lose interest or whatever. So for those that wanted to hear this, I don't know if anybody remember or even know knew that... Um, there was a little movie coming out that had came out. Um, and when did it come out? Let me look. That Lena Waif was putting out. What's it called? Beauty. That's what it's called. Beauty Netflix. Um, when did it come out? It came out. It came out in June. June 11th. And I'm just now watching it. June what? July the 15th. I watched it last night. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Um, I know Lena Waithe kind of, I think, probably wrote on it and co-produced co or whatever. Somebody else directed it. But it's called Beauty. I remember when she posted on her Instagram um, the trailer for it or whatever. And as soon as I saw it, I said, oh, so Whitney Houston? That's what I was like. Whitney Houston, you know what I'm saying? Because it literally was just Whitney Houston. That's all that I was getting. And so... <laughs> I didn't hear nothing else about it. I didn't hear nobody on Twitter talking about it. I didn't hear nobody or see nobody posting about it or anything. So that's how come I forgot that the shit was out. Uh, I don't know if y'all... Bondi, okay? Bondi was tweeting about it probably a couple of weeks ago. And I said, damn, let me go ahead and watch this. And I totally forgot because I got distracted by other shit. You know what I'm saying? And so um something told me to go ahead and watch it go look it up right now since i had a little bit of time you know so i i watched it last night and i was talking about it in another sh uh, video so that's why i said let me go ahead and watch it <sighs> i'm gonna be fair the movie is not bad it's a one-time watch for me it's only an hour and 35 minutes okay it is very much a one-time watch for me um, because for one, I am tired of Whitney Houston movies. Okay. And they can say that it's not a Whitney Houston movie, but it very much is like a retelling of Whitney Houston in a fiction, a, a different, like a fan's perspective or whatever. Or, you know, I don't know if it was taken from Robin Crawford's book that was Whitney Houston's friends or whatever, but, um, it just felt like Lena Waits, um, you know, her version of what happened with Whitney and all that stuff or her retelling or, you know, what she probably would have liked or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. It was coming from her mind. Okay. That's all that I got from it. And if you don't know Lena Waithe, she's a big Whitney Houston stand. If you go back and you look at a lot of her stuff, you know, she has Whitney Houston all incorporated. Like her TV show, 20s, the main character, Hattie, she's a big Whitney Houston stand. Um, something else just, just happened on uh, uh, The Shy. The episode from last week, you know, the Christmas episode, you saw that when Keisha came in, she put on a preacher's wife for the kids to watch. And they was all, everybody was just looking at it throughout the show. You know what I'm saying? And everybody was like, why you going to put the preacher's wife on and not no like little cartoons or whatever for the kids? Okay. I want to watch that shit. Not on um, no kids. Okay. That's not a kid. But I mean, I guess that's for adults or teenagers or like middle school kids, but not no, it just didn't make sense to me, but okay. So, we've established that, you know, she's this big Whitney Houston stan or whatever. So, you know, we get into the movie and the main character is is Beauty. Instead of her name being Whitney, her name is Beauty. Uh, she very much resembles Whitney, the ADS, uh, 80s, you know, look that she had about her. You know, skinny and all that and the hair and the, the 80s fashion and 
Uh, you had Niecy Nash playing her dad. I mean, her mom. Uh, who was the guy playing the dad? The guy playing the dad. What's his name? The cast. The cast. Uh, shit. Where's he at? Now, why wouldn't they put him right there in the beginning with everybody else? Baby, they didn't even put him on here. That's fucked up. Oh. Giancarlo Esposito. He played a dad. And if y'all look him up, y'all done seen him in just about everything. You know, he played on Do the Right Thing. He played in, um... I think he played in Breaking Bad. Baby, he played in everything. I can't name all the stuff that he played in. Okay, but he's he's an accomplished actor, okay? You got him playing the daddy. Um, he winds up, you know, I hated his character so much. I hated his character so much. Now, I don't get too much into Whitney Houston's backstory or whatever. You know, I know that she grew up in Jersey. I know Sissy Houston was her mom, that she did background singing. And that's very much what they played off of with Niecy Nash character as her mother. You know, um, but she tried to get a record deal and she never popped the way that she wanted to pop. Um, you know, they had Sharon Stone that was playing the head of the label that was going to sign uh, Beauty and who at one point signs, uh, signed her mother, but it didn't work. And so I'm just going to assume that Sharon Stone, baby, it took to the end until somebody said on my Twitter, you know, that Sharon Stone, you know, and to have Sharon Stone up in it. I said, bitch, what? So I had to go continue watching. I said, oh, my God, this whole time I did not realize that that was Sharon Stone. OK, you know, so I guess she's supposed to be Clyde Davis, you know. And so um, her brothers and. The fact that they names were Cain and Abel, and I think the 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 record executive or whatever her name was supposed to be colonizer or something like that. I said, what the fuck is this? Now can we be any more obvious? I get what we're trying to put out there, whatever, you know, being woke and all that shit, but it was just like, why would you Cain and Abel and uh, and, of course, the Kane boy, he just so happened to be the child from another relationship. And the other kids are all from his dad and then, uh, uh, or from, from, from Beauty's dad. And then Beauty's dad be talking to the boy so fucking wrong. And he be talking to the kids just like they ain't his kids. He told Abel, bitch, you ain't going to be shit, okay? You think you coasting back because you spoiled and, you know, uh, um, you got your good looks and women coming after you, but soon them looks going to fade and you ain't going to be able to do nothing with it and your kids ain't going to like you and you ain't got no talent and you ain't got this and all this shit or whatever. And then going to try to make it seem like he was joking because he was drunk and they laughing at that shit. I said, no, no. I was like, what is this? <laughs> I said, parents be talking to their kids like that. Girl, that'd be the day I say, you know what? I'm about to put your ass in a nursing home, so don't ever ask me for shit. Because, <laughs> oh, you didn't seal your fate right there, all right? You know, and the the uniqueness, I guess, about this story is the fact that, you know, they're putting on the forefront that beauty is in a lesbian relationship. She's a lesbian. That's what they're basically posting out there. We don't see her with any other body but this one girl named Jasmine. And we see her from the time where she's trying to get the deal. You know, she's heavily into the church, you know, just like Whitney and his sissy were. Heavily into the church. And um, up until she gets her deal and she has her first big big performance on the Mel, was it Merv Griffin show? But they said it was something that was Merlin Griffin or something like that. That's what their version was on the movie. And then it cut off. I was like, what? So... Y'all spent all this time giving us all this backstory. And I'm like, well, the way that they did this shit, I probably would have liked it better if it was like a little docu, a little mini series or whatever. Gave me a couple of episodes so we could continue the story. Y'all ended it as soon as she was about to go on stage, walking out of the dressing room to go on stage to the talk show when she had to sing, um, she had to sing Home. Okay, Over the Rainbow. She had to sing Over the Rainbow because if y'all go back and you look at when Whitney Houston was on the Merv, is it Merv Griffin? Whichever one it is, y'all know which one. And she sang Home, okay, from The Wizard of Oz. But on here, you know, she had to sing uh, 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 Somewhere Over the Rainbow, okay? And the only thing that I truly, truly like was the fact that because this is the only music that we got out 
added a whole show because the girl has been tooted and booted and, 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 and propped up to be this best singer. Like, her voice is just phenomenal. She's great. She's going to do this and she's going to do that. She's ready. She's here. You, mother, you was ahead of your time, but your daughter right here, she's right here on track. It is time for her. Her voice is needed. You know, she's going to have hits. She's going to do this. She's going to do that. They hyped her up so much, and we always see her up in the studio. We saw her up in the church, and she's supposed to be singing, but we never heard her sing. I said, what the fuck? I said, bitch, that's where you lost me right there. That was one of the problems that I could let pass. I was like, I wanted to see if the girl can hum. Just hum. Like, what? I said, oh, no. I, and again, what I was about to say, the only other singing that we actually heard were the clips that they was putting in throughout the times, you know, they had the Clark sisters, you know, singing old footage from the Clark sisters. Um, I don't know if it was a Pace sister. I don't know most of these gospel artists like that, but it was this other woman, you know, she was singing and it just sounded great. Uh, they had a Mahalia Jackson uh, clip in there. They had a Ella Fitzgerald clip in there where she was scatting. They had a, um, when she had to figure out whether or not she wanted to sing, uh, which way she wanted to sing uh, Over the Rainbow, because the record exec, Sharon Stone's character, was basically trying to blend her down. You know what I'm saying? Trying to make her more mainstream and acceptable to the white audience okay and it was even brought up the whole situation that happened with whitney and this is how we i was like y'all could not disguise it and be any more obvious that this is about whitney without saying that it's about whitney especially at this particular moment when she was like what would be your response if they say that you know you're not catering to your you know you're not coming out with a soulful sound but you're catering to the more mainstream white pop audiences and you're not being, you're neglecting your people or whatever. And that's exactly what happened to Whitney Houston when she was coming up and she first came out. You know, people felt like, oh, you're trying to be this white girl. You're trying to cater to the white audience. And, you know, you're so freaking pop and you forgot your roots and stuff like that. Even when she, I think when she was at the Soul Train Awards, one of those awards and she won or when she was nominated and they called her name during the nominations, they was booing her. That was the backlash that she got because everybody felt, or the black people or, you know, urban people, as they say, they felt that, you know, she was catering more soul to the white folks, okay? Putting out these little pop tunes instead of putting out R&B, which we have to get out of that mind frame because even till this day, when you see a black artist come out, you automatically expect them to be a rapper, if they're male or woman, a rapper or a R&B singer, a soul singer, a neo soul singer, or a rapper. You know what I'm saying? They can't do pop. They can't do heavy metal. They can't do alternative rock. They can't do country. Oh, no, because now you over there trying to be like the white folks or whatever. That's what you trying to do. What is wrong with that? You got people like Doja Cat. She does pop. But yet, they won't nominate her for the pop categories when they need to pop nominate her for the pop categories all the time. They so quick to throw her and freaking The Weeknd into an R&B category and they are not R&B for the shit that they be doing. They're mostly pop. And it is okay to be a pop girl. It is okay to be a pop guy. It is okay to be an alternative, you know, artist or whatever if you're a black. It is okay. You know what I'm saying? You know, it doesn't mean that you're selling out or whatever. That's just what type of music you like. And that's what type of music that, you know, you gravitate to. Who said that we have to be in this one particular genre? And so that's what comes into play when you see artists going outside the box and you so used to them doing a certain type of music. That's why people was shocked when Drake did what he did with the house music and the same thing with Beyonce did what she did with the house music. So, you know, they wasn't expecting it, but you can't put these artists in a box. And that's what we get for putting them in a box and being surprised like, damn, that ain't what I expected or wanted. But we can't put them in a box. We got to stop doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because music is just so much more than just one particular genre. Okay. You'll probably get more places. That's why, you know, I know people have an issue with Chris Brown. But even though I say that some of his shit sound the same, at least he don't directly stay in R&B. He will do a pop joint in a minute. And that shit be sounding good. His pop shit be sounding good. Y'all just got to go listen. I ain't, I ain't, hey, it is what it is. But, yeah, so that happened. Um, You get onto that. 
And of course, you get your career. And like I said, they focus in on the fact that she is a lesbian. She has a girlfriend named Jasmine. Um, mind you, they're kids. They're teenagers at this point. At least that's what I'm going to assume. By the time she gets out there to New York and sign the contract and get out of her parents' house, I'm going to assume that she probably, what, 18, 17, 18, probably 19 at the most, you know, because she's living on her own. She's living with Jasmine. Um, at one particular point, we see that the issue becomes the fact that the mom knows that she's gay. Everybody knows that she's gay. But some of them, they just don't want to acknowledge it and they don't like it. They think that, oh, Jasmine is the sin. You know what I'm saying? She's coming in to uh, do evil, whatever. She needs to get away from her, whatever. Uh, the dad don't like Jasmine because of the simple fact that she knows that he knows that Jasmine has a big influence over um, beauty. And mostly it's because it's not that she's influential over her. It's because or like telling her what she needs to do. It's because Jasmine sees past his bullshit. Jasmine know that that man ain't upright. It always be them church motherfuckers that be acting like they so upright, but they be the most evilest, dirtiest people that's out here doing shit. And you could tell that the daddy was cheating. The daddy was fucking looking at women in the goddamn church while by his wife. And she caught it and had to step in front of him so that he couldn't stare at the lady. Okay, he be going on business trip, probably fucking around. You know, he talks to the kids horribly. Uh, oh, she was daddy's girls up until, you know, she decided that she wanted to have a lawyer look at the contract. And he basically said, you're not going to fuck this shit up for me. I said, oh, so you all about the money. And she still went on ahead and signed it because she ain't want to lose favor for him. I said, bitch, that would never have been me. Because once I sign the contract, that ain't no guarantee, bitch, that I'm going to give you anything, okay? Your name ain't on this motherfucking contract. It's my name, okay? I'm signing my signature on this shit, bitch. You ain't got to get shit, okay? So that that bothered me. The way, and I'm sitting here like, so was her, was, was Whitney Houston father like this? Granted, you know, it was like the Joe Jackson type feel, but worse, I felt like. I don't know. I ain't going to say worse because I don't know if he hit the kids or whatever, spanked the kids or whatever. But the way that he yoked her up in that kitchen when and, and then did you see the way that he talked to uh the wife when he was sitting at the table when they was talking to the uh Miss Sharon Stone? He was like, uh, don't make me slap you in front of this white woman. I said, what? Wow, I said, oh, okay, you know, that kind of disturbed me a lot. The way that they had the brother, uh, the older brother just so goddamn angry, you know what I'm saying? That irked me so much. And then he wanted to have the, bro the, the, the boy that wasn't his boy, okay, his biological son, to please him and to show that you love me, go out there and take care of Jasmine. I said, what? And then gonna bring the other brother in, and Abel's really finna go out there and now see the other brother, Abel. He didn't want to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? And he even fought him. And that's why they didn't do anything. Okay? Because they beat each other ass up in the street. And they was tired from that. And I'm just sitting here like, oh my goodness. You know what I'm saying? And then the whole relationship between Jasmine and Beauty would have been good. Because <sighs> I get it. You know, that young love and all of that. And they're sneaking around, but, you know, people know, but they're not going to say anything because we're going to act like we're dumb to it. We're going to be willfully ignorant to it. But um, just as long as it's not getting into interfering with your life or interfering with our money and what we got going on, you do whatever the hell it is that you want to do. But, you know, now that you listening to this girl and she telling you that you need to get a lawyer or, you know, uh, trying to decide or stop you from signing this contract or whatever... Uh, she got to go. She got to go. So it was one particular scene. You know, Whitney Houston had a problem with drugs, okay? And they kind of put that in there and made reference through that throughout the show that, you know, either she was smoking weed or she went to a club with Jasmine and the bartender dude, he came over there and gave her some drugs some free of charge on the house or whatever um, and said that, you know, I'm giving it to her because she prettier than you to Jasmine. I was like, mm-hmm. Okay, that's fucked up, but all right. And then Jasmine already made known that, you know, to the bartender that he doesn't, well, she doesn't take the drugs. It was more so Beauty's thing. And she was at the club, a gay club that he was at, you know what I'm saying? And um, he was trying to get her to do some drugs. And she was like, that ain't my thing. That's Beauty thing. She was like, well, go ahead and get this something, get this to her on the house or whatever. And she was like, mm, what? 
And this whole scene did not make sense to me. This is one of the scenes that really did not make sense to me. It was two scenes that did not make sense to me. And this was the first one. And I hated it. Because I... I don't know what went on in Robin's past or whatever. If she was assaulted at one point or whatever. I just don't like looking at things. Like, I get it. It happens where assaults happen, especially with people who are LGBT. You know, it happens. But the way that this went down, it made absolutely no sense. And I didn't understand why I was put in there. Did he get, like, did the father reach out to the bartender and set this up or whatever? Or had he already been plotting since day one to do something to old girl? Because you telling her that you got some drugs to give to beauty you already saying that you don't do that so he's telling you well i got some stuff in the back let's go burn the, um the, the club outside in the back in the alley or whatever and i'll get you the stuff or whatever she was hesitant but then she went on ahead and went and then when we see them going around the back of the club outside she was still hesitant for a second and then she goes back there and we don't see nothing else happen we hear the train tracks getting loud or whatever and the howling of the train and next thing you know she's in a hospital so right then and there we just either inferred that either she was sexually assaulted or she was just beat the fuck up real bad you know and my whole thing is that didn't even fucking make sense lena and whoever put that up in there. Why would she go back there if she don't do drugs? And why would she be stupid enough to go to the back of a club outside where nobody is looking to go get some drugs from a person when she don't do drugs? And the person that does them is not even talking to her at that moment. Because she worrying about her career. It just did not make sense. All right. And I just did not like how lazily that was put up in there. Because it's like, yeah, can we get something where... A lesbian or somebody of the LGBT is not getting attacked. It's not getting attacked. And it's like, it just, it, I don't even think it had anything to do with her sexuality. It was just stupid. It was just dumb, the fact that that happened, okay? Because we don't know if she just got beat up or if she got sexually assaulted and beat up. We don't know which one happened, okay? We just know she woke up in a hospital and her face was fucked up a little bit. And then Beauty came up in there and she tried to break up with her. Uh, Jasmine tried to break up with her. But next thing you know, she's in New York living with her. I said, what? Well, I said, well, you got that part right. You got that part right. Because let me tell you something. Lesbians will break up with each other. And then two days later, I know I said, fuck you. Fuck your mama. Fuck your daddy. Fuck your kids. Fuck your life. Don't ever fucking talk to me. And I know I blocked you. But I was just emotional. I was just in my feelings. And you know I love you. So let's get this thing back together. And we back together. Trust and believe. I didn't been in there. I didn't be. I ain't say those things. I ain't say those things to those extents, okay? But, um, you know, women, we be emotional as hell, okay? And sometimes we just act out on pure emotions. And, uh, <laughs> we literally a breakup. I'm telling you, let me tell you something. When it comes to lesbians, they ain't never lie. If you go on TikTok, if, if you so many TikTok videos about this, um, people be like, if you got an ex that you still talking to, don't fucking try to talk to me, okay? Because a lesbian will break up with their girl and then try to move on to somebody else. But that girl's still in the background. That girl is still, that ex is still in the background. Either they still friends or they still fucking, okay? Yeah. They're never completely gone, all right? And it's not on no stalker type shit. It's just how it is. You know what I'm saying? We're just never completely gone. <laughs> don't, don't, don't expect that shit from me. I don't expect that shit from me, though. Um, I'm just putting y'all onto some game, okay? That's just how it is. But like I said, that shit just didn't make no sense, the, the drug thing. But then also, one part that really didn't make sense as well, of course, they put the Bobby Brown character in, you know, played by Joey Badass. He came to the door because um, Jasmine was in her apartment and she was playing music real loud. And he was like, you know, it's late. I need you to keep that music down. And, you know, uh, I've been here in this building for two years and not a, not no problem. Then all of a sudden they let teenagers come up in here and it's a whole bunch of noise. And she was like, I'm not no teenager. He was like, well, you look like a teenager. She said, it's only because you haven't seen me without my clothes on. Or, I mean, my clothes off. You haven't seen me without my clothes off. I 
I was like, what? And that was the second part that really threw me. That was the only, I said, the, 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 the drug thing and going in the back of the club and getting your ass beat or whatever, that threw me the fuck off and then that part threw me off. Now, you're supposed to be in this relationship with Jasmine and, you know, for better words or whatever, we automatically assume that she was a lesbian. You never put it out there that she was sexually ambiguous or, you know, sexually fluid or whatever, but given that it was Whitney, I guess, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, but I mean, that's what they're loosely basing this off of. And we're going to say loosely, but you know, this is what they're basing it off of. But to throw it up in there that all of a sudden she like dick. <laughs> I, I get it because that is what happened with Whitney. But at the same time, it was like to, to, to have that introduction and for her to say something like that. Because that's just because you haven't seen me with my clothes off. You still are like a little ass girl. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The girl, the woman that plays her, I don't even know how old she is. I don't know if she's a teenager. I don't know if she's 20-something. I don't know if she's 30-something. But she she was bothering me, like, um, because she just was so young looking, you know. So it's like she was young trying to play an adult, and it just didn't work with me. The way that her voice was, it was so airy and so childlike. I don't know if that's truly what they was going for. Uh, it was like, you know, they had her asking stupid questions and everything and just immature as fuck. And it was just like, I wanted her to grow up. <laughs> I just wanted her to grow up. Like, oh, it was just bothering me so bad. I did not understand that. I said, mm. Now, Whitney, I know doing like this, but I know this is a reimagination or loosely based, you know what I'm saying? A little fan fiction type shit. But, you know, she flirted with him. And then when she goes onto the, 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 the talk show, you got Jasmine in the um, dressing room with her. And her mom, she's recording all that stuff or whatever. Cute. So they very much still together. But then he's to knock at the door and it's old boy. And she invites him in and they're heavily flirting heavily flirting and i mean it's not even you have to be like are they flirting or not it was so crystal clear jasmine standing right there and i said you just gonna do that shit in front of her face now see that's some fucked up shit now see jasmine that would have been my cue to fucking leave fuck that bitch okay at that moment that's what i would have said because what you're not gonna do you're not gonna play me like that you're not gonna play me like no story bean burger bitch okay that's not what you're gonna do you know but it ended like that because then she goes out to go get on the stage and all we saw her going is walking through the door. She did have a scene where the dad had a heart attack and she came down there to talk to him and see how he was doing. And he basically was like, bitch, you owe me. She said, nigga, I don't owe you shit. Now, see, I used to think that I owed you life or whatever, but let me tell you something. I don't owe you nothing. I said, oh, okay, cool. And that's the last words that you want to say to your father. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like... I know it's something, I feel like this is something that we not supposed to take seriously, you're just supposed to watch it or whatever. It had this moment where, like, I will say, the connection between Jasmine and Beauty, I did like. I did like that they put that on display. I did like they actually showed these women together. They're loving up on each other. It wasn't a sexual energy. It was just a loving energy that was between them, okay? You know, especially when they got into the, uh, the actual New York apartment. And, you know, they had that moment where I think um, they put on Troop, All I Do Is Think Of You. And they had that moment where they was just being one and romantic with each other. It was just very sensual, not sexual, but sensual and romantic with each other. And I like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but other than that, I was just looking at this like... Lena, leave Whitney alone. I want people to stop. Just leave Whitney alone. I don't need anybody's version of it, fan version, fiction version, fiction or non-fiction version. I don't need any more documentaries. I don't need any more loosely based on. I don't need any more of that. Let Miss Whitney Houston rest, okay? Please. Please. But, you know, and I don't care what people say. Oh, it ain't about. It's very much about. Just go watch it. And you can point out. I'm sitting here like, okay, I can find this clip on YouTube where Whitney did this. Whitney did that. Whitney did that. And I love me some Whitney Houston. But <sighs> let it go. Not let her legacy go. But let trying to, you know, capitalize off of her go. Please. Please. But, um. Baby, this probably why Lena Wayne ain't never reached out to me because, you know. I be giving, 
I, I can't, I can't, I can't. Even if I like you as a person and you put out something, I and that's the thing. See, this is probably why I can't. It's just probably not meant for me to be like, you know, buddy, buddy or cool with people in the, in, in the industry or whatever, because I have to talk about things and I don't like to get sugarcoated opinions. Okay. I don't want to sugarcoat stuff. I don't want to kiss ass type of shit. That ain't me. I'm going to have to get a real. And this is the real. The real is if I had to give it out of 10 stars, I would give it three. And the three is coming because I like the way that they handled the romance between the relationship a little bit between Beauty and Jasmine, the lesbian aspect of it, showing that, especially dealing with the fact that it was in the 80s, early 90s, and people were not, you know, very much keen on homosexuality back then, especially when that was around a time where, you know, um, AIDS, HIV started coming out and they labeled that the gay disease and all that shit, you know, kind of like the same way they're trying to do the thing that's out right now, uh, which is so fucked up, but... <clears throat> Other than that, I'm still kind of mad a little bit. I'm going to let it go, but I just really wish they would have let the girl hum. <laughs> and if you cannot get the authority, uh, the authorization to use a person's music, obviously you don't need to be doing a, bio, uh, a picture about them or whatever, okay? That's all I'm going to say. But anyway, y'all tell me how y'all felt about it. If y'all haven't watched it, I'm not going to tell y'all not to watch it. Go ahead and watch it. You'll probably like it. You'll probably like it a little bit more than I did. But, um... Go watch it. It's called Beauty on Netflix. And uh, come back to the comments and tell me how you feel about it. All right. I'll see y'all later. Peace.